Hey guys, welcome to a video. Now this is probably an unexpected one, one you weren't expecting for a game quite old. But I'm going to be doing a review of the Half-Life 2. Of Half-Life 2. But it's going to include episode 1 and 2 as well, as they're pretty much the same engine. A little bit upgraded, but still have the same of the base things. So let's um, start off with the graphics of Half-Life 2. Now while I can't say that they're up to today's standards, of course, it being quite old now, they still hold up pretty well. I mean, you look at some of the games that come out these days, and, you know, they look cool, but... I know that compared to Half-Life 2, they look way better. But Half-Life 2 graphics, you've got to say, it hasn't aged badly. It's aged pretty nicely, to be honest. I mean, it still holds up to this two to the state... <laughs> two today's standards, sorry. Um, so, you know, wh I like the game. I like the graphics. The graphics, I think, fit the game, and I don't think Half-Life 2 really needs the best graphics to be a good game series. I think there are other factors which contribute to it becoming an overall good buy. Um, Half-Life 2's AI. Now, um, I think I'll just discuss this later because it's quite big-ish. It's a lot of stuff I'd like to say about it. Let's say um, the level design. Now, the level design, in my opinion, you know, it, it's great. Okay, I really like it because uh, this is links with the game mechanics as well. There's no arrow that will tell you where to go. The enemies aren't th like spotted and you can see them moving through the walls in x-ray or you can't even spot them. You just have to remember where they are with your brain. This is when shooters, this is what a shooter should be today. You shouldn't have the ability to spot them and see them moving through walls. and You shouldn't even be able to spot them. You should just be able to remember with your brain yourself. Where they, where they were last, what direction they were walking in, what gun they had, and you have to con you have to really think about it. That's what a game should be. But uh, today's games aren't like that, you know. You still get to be able to spot people through the wall. There, it's just almost like it guides you. You always know where to go. You always have this one guy that says, "Oh, look, maybe if you pull that lever, it will destroy something that you need." You have to figure this out in Half Life Two on your own. Some people find that frustrating, whereas I call that a proper shooter. That is what shooters in these days really need. They need to throw you into the game universe. And you, there you go. You have to work yourself on. There was a scene in Half-Life 2 where there's a uh, Half-Life vehicle. Uh, a combine vehicle, sorry. Uh, that is plugged into this net that keeps a force field going. And there are these two things behind the wheels you have to move. Now, there's, there's no guy, right? There's no person anywhere that's like, you know, maybe if you move them, it will fall. You have to figure that out yourself. So, you know, it falls back, it falls back into the sea, it rips out the wire, and the force field goes down, and you can keep moving. The game is just amazing. Some of these puzzles just go on for ages. It's just such a really nice game. It really works well with the player, if you know how to play it. It really brings a whole new concept to um, actually thinking about the game. Because it doesn't even tell you what direction to run in. I mean, to a brief, to a small amount it does, because, um, you know, you can't go into areas that, that are that you're not supposed to go into, but like, it still doesn't show you where to go. I've been running in circles for hours in Half-Life 2 before, and even in some of the videos I've released of Half-Life 2 for the past coming weeks, uh, I have had trouble moving around in the levels because it's not been telling you whether you go up, down, left, right, diagonal, what. It doesn't tell you anything, and that's what a game should be like these days. There shouldn't be any, there should be minimal UI. Health and ammo is all you really need, and, you know, weapon selection. You don't need to know where the objective is, unless it's, you know, a super big map and open world game needs that kind of stuff, you know? But Half-Life 2 was just perfect for that, and Episode 1 and 2 as well. Uh, let's go to the AI now. So, the AI in um, Half-Life as a whole was always good. Half-Life 1 I'm excluding from this because it's just the newer games. Um, Half-Life 2 was, is just, the AI is really nice. That They're not the best, but they're definitely not the worst. Like, you can expect an, a combine soldier to run in this door and get you, but no, he'll run around, get another door, open it, or he'll throw a grenade in, flush you out. They won't just be stupid, run in and kill you. There's also a certain degree of stealth to the game. If you hide enough, they won't always be able to see you, and they'll for they won't forget, but they will lose sight of you. And, um, they'll forget, they'll, not forget, sorry, they, they kind of, um, don't know where you are, and they'll search. You know? They also do patrol. Um... And again, there's the there's as big AI as the helicopters, the gunships, the advisors, the striders. 
and then you've got the AI for the smaller things like the city scan at the manhack all those kind of things the hopper mine those are all fantastic AI I know the hop mine hopper and the banhack is not that you can say are kind of small things but it is AI because they do f come towards you don't they uh, and it's just fantastic it really is it gets me every time I, I and it may not be the same for you but every time I've played through Half-Life 2 the AI have never been in the same place Unless, well, what I mean by that is they've never done the same things over and over again. In my experience, they always change. And I think you'll find there is no point in playing Half-Life 2 on easy mode. And in fact, I only recently discovered I was playing it on easy because for some reason it stopped giving me the choice to change difficulty. So, I've got to change my difficulty because at the moment, um, I think in the video I, I series I'm doing, it's on easy and I don't know how to change it. Because it never gave me the ch chance when I first started it, so I don't know. But in, on easy mode, I think the AI are just too easy. The damage is it's just too easy. Medium needs medium to hard is the one you want to go for. Um, now let's go to the gun, the gun mechanics and the gunplay. See how that works. Now, in my opinion, it's a, it, that is amazing as well. It won't take tons of bullets to kill a, a combine soldier if you know where to hit them. You really have to conserve ammo. You've got really good weapons that can kill most enemies in a shot, but you don't have enough ammo because the ammo for those weapons are scarce. That would be the 357 or the crossbow, or the pulse rifle with the AR2, even, with the um, alt fire mode, which fires an energy ball, so, so that kills anything, most units, on one hit, but they're so rare. The only way you get, get them is to kill combine elites, and they don't show up a lot until you're in the Citadel. Um, I think... Uh, relating back to the AI is that I forgot to mention it's just that little characters I know it's not really AI is it but like you get to know the characters really easily and that's a that's a another subject I'll get onto in a minute the gunplay in my opinion isn't too like it, it works really well with the movement you can't easily dodge bullets at a certain range and I feel that the gunplay is amazing for the game and when it was made and they did so well doing it um, that it will enter entertain you for hours, most likely. Um, so yeah, that that's the gunplay out of the way. So let's go on to the story of the game. While it, there is no like story on Half-Life 2 of what happened between Half-Life 2 and Half-Life 1, you kind of get that from the characters. They'll speak about the story to you. They'll tell you about things that have happened recently and, you know, kind of make the story for like with dialogue. For that, that sounds realistic as well. Dialogue in the game is pretty, is pretty good. Um... Yeah, so let's go off the story. I'd say that's um a really I I th I'd say it's a good story. It it could be explained better, but di the dialogue kind of explains what you really need to know. Um yeah, so ha Half Life Two and Half Life Episode Half Life Two Episode One and Two as well are really they really aged well. Um, and I was kind of freaked out the other day to realize that Titanfall one or two and or both of them are actually running on the source engine and i was like how did someone make those games run on the source engine in any way and i might not even be correct about that but on wiki it says that it runs on the source engine and i was surprised because if you go to half-life 2 css or those other games or the newest version of it you would not even know that titanfall was on the source engine and you'd think it would be on another engine you know unreal 4 maybe unreal 3 unity i don't know but not the source engine that's weird but there it is. It's on the Source Engine, apparently. So it has aged quite well. It's still being used by developers. And yeah. So um, I think it is worth it. To, if you want to pick it up and buy it, you can do that. Um, it's it, It'll entertain you. No matter how many times you replay it, you can replay it and replay it. And uh, some things will be different. Um, very, very fun game. I'd say I... I actually think it's a 10 out of 10. It's one of my favourite game series ever to have been released. And I'm as gutted as anyone else that Half-Life 3 still isn't out. and may not ever come out. But, like, the trouble is with this point is that Half-Life 3 would have to be perfect. It would have to be such a damn good game to justify the wait. And about how good Half-Life 2 and Episode 1 and 2 were when they came out. It would have to be better than them, but use modern day technology and as far as i'm aware they also said they wanted to release games with new technology so they say but i'm 
again, it would Half Life Three would have to be really, really good to not get hate. So you know that that that's why Half Life Three isn't coming in my opinion. They, it would have to be a damn good game for it to uh, be worth the wait for people not to get back um, for Valve not to get backlash. Um, uh, and yeah, uh, that's all I have to say about Half Life Two. It's a brilliant, brilliant game series. Pick it all up, even pick the first one up, and enjoy it because it's a damn good game series. It, it it will entertain anyone that plays it that isn't biased when they go in. Um, everything about the game feels really nice. So, yeah. In fact, I can I can give you some additional additional ones there. The physics of the game as well. The physics was really is it's kind of good. There are times where it spazzes out and may actually kill you in the end, but the, I haven't had too much of that happen to me before. The physics is really nice though. Um, yeah, the physics is, mm, I'd say, a 8 out of 10, because there are times where it's, it spazzes and it can actually kill you at times, or you you run on a wheel when you're on that slippery bit in the canals and you send, you go flying, it's just weird. The uh, puzzles in the game are really nice as well, they heavily use the physics in some of them, like there's one where you have to put blue barrels in the water that go up into a basket that knock up the ramp so your elbow can go over it, that was in my latest episode which is being uploaded at the time of making this video so you can expect that so yep pick it up half-life 2 i am a bit biased because i love the game and i love i, I really like i love valve as a company they've made damn good games and i really hope they continue making games because they know how to do it they sent you in with no help you have to use your brain to figure it all out and that is what I, that's what modern shooters these days should be not these things that hold your hand and show you through the game and always have that convenient character that points everything you should do yourself to, to thing. And they, they just tell you what to do. Where in Half-Life 2, you're put in there, you're done. Nope, no help. We're leaving. You're on your own. Figure it out. And you do. Um, but it, it can be annoying. But Half-Life 2, two, 10 out of 10 for me. Um, same with Episode 1 and 2, so there's not going to be any separate videos. I'd say it's a solid game. Go pick it up and you'll have lots of fun playing it. Thanks for watching this video guys, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.